that I was carrying a, like a 60 millimeter mortar that weighed 60 pounds on my back for a year. And then at the end of the series, I realized they had a fake one I could have been using the whole time. The most challenging movie is Bohemian Rhapsody by far. Doing justice to someone who is uh, such a significant part of so many people's lives in our culture, I, I must to me feel similar to, to the pressure that Daniel must feel on this. For, for me, nothing will compare to, to Bohemian for the work that went into it. There comes a point where you have to put all that stuff aside or it's gonna destroy you. Your best asset in, in Anything you, you go to work on, whatever film it is, is confidence. And if that confidence gets destroyed, forget it. You're done. I think it's beautiful. It's almost perfect. Yes, give it more rock and roll. I guess the lesson from the previous film is to disregard it. I just try to distance myself from those thoughts as much as possible. In fact, uh, the only time I've recently thinking about pressure is from doing the press because now I'm actually starting to get concerned. You know, I've just got to an age now where I'm starting to say, screw it, essentially. Yeah. People's opinions I respect, but if I know that I went to work and I put everything, my heart and soul, on the day, then what more can you do? Otherwise, you're living up to people's expectations, and that's no way to live. I got injured on a, sh a show called The Pacific where I lost uh, the movement of my hand for five days because we were using real weapons and I was carrying a, like a 60 millimeter mortar that weighed 60 pounds on my back for a year. What the hell are you doing? Break the shit down, get ready to move. And then at the end of the series, I realized they had a fake one I could have been using the whole time, but we had Marines on set that were dead set on doing it for real. There will be a number of places. I thought Melbourne was gorgeous on the Pacific. I did a film in Belgrade in Serbia. I never thought I would love it so much. And, and Montenegro. Vancouver's a gorgeous city. So many of my family members live in Paris, so one day, if uh, that is an opportunity, I'm sure that would be number one on, the, my, uh, on my list. I can't stand it. In fact, I start making decisions on the next job. If it has too much green screen, I won't do it. Because psychologically, you go to sleep and all you see is green. Work can sometimes be disturbing enough. I don't need it to infiltrate into to my home life. Choreography, some weaponry. I learned a lot of that from uh, from the training for the Pacific because we did a military boot camp. For this, I created an accent that is an amalgamation of a few different countries, so you can't really pin down and kind of curse one, one particular country in the world and say, oh, that's the bad guy, that's where they're from, they're all from that place. James Bond, license to kill. You develop all these skills as an actor that uh, some, sometimes it's really special to be able to look back and say, I can now do this, I can never would have been able to ride a horse or rock climb. I was never a fast typer. And you know, we wanted to be so authentic with the coding that not only did I have a typing coach, I had someone in my ear saying, stop hitting the space bar. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Step one, identify the target and its flaws. There are always flaws. I learned that early in life. What I love about Paul is he keeps the camera rolling, he shoots on film, and he never calls action and he never calls cut. So you just start over. As soon as the scene's finished, you start over. And he never told me that. I learned that from Philip Seymour Hoffman, who uh, as soon as the take was finished, he just start, started right back in. And there's a, a beautiful freedom to that. You know, Paul can operate the camera flawlessly. Paul can light your scene on his own. I would uh, hesitate to think of something that he can't do. Paul, if you're listening, I want to work with you again, man. Without question, top of the list, Robin Williams. Key to self-reliance is a vigorous life, and I, my pants are split so hard I can actually see. <laughs> Robin would come on set, and uh, in between takes, of Night at the Museum, just start in on, on like a stand-up routine. It was another one of those films where you didn't want to go back to the trailer because if you missed a free show from Robin, you would regret it for the rest of your life. <laughs>